I remember there was a time when we was kings and queens, prophets and rulers, judging the earth. But now we're stuck at the bottom of the totem pole. Where did we go wrong as a people? I think our people need to understand this with a wake up call and give them understanding of what's going on. So bring it. Early morning, rise up. Open your eyes up. Looking in the mirror, it gets no clearer. Cause we don't understand our own selves Drowning in sorrow with empty Hennessy bottles up on the shelf Cause everybody wanna be a king Selling out their soul for this mean green cream thing Paper chasing but not facing the facts That as a nation we all done got lax And letting the devil control us And thinking like them damn Africans that sold us We in captivity because they hold us Work is hard with heavy burdens on our shoulders Man, I thought we were some soldiers But every second that I look, we getting cream like Folgers You see, the Lord done told us So to me, there's no surprise on why they fold us Shalom everyone, this is Judiah Once again with another video It's no secret that, um Slavery and discrimination has done a number on us in this country, and they tell us we should be over it by now, but it's still very real. I'm a fifth generation slave descendant, meaning only five generations ago, my ancestors were slaves in America in the 1800s. My mother was the first black integrated into her school, and she's just one generation away from me, and she had to fight to get through school that day. And she was arrested for defending herself in school, trying to get her education. And that arrest is still on her record till this day. So the residue of slavery continued after emancipation. And the residue of discrimination continued after the civil rights movement. We fought for our freedom. We fought to have equal rights. We fought to survive. We fought to be accepted as we are. And we're still fighting today simply to be respected in a country that once hung us in their backyards for fun. Now, all that being said, our biggest fight is the fight to know our true identity. Now, I'm kind of young, but I can imagine coming out of the civil rights movement in the 50s and the 60s, excited to be able to walk down the street and hold my head up high, listening to everybody from Ben Ami to Martin Luther King Jr. to Malcolm X even the Black Panthers, trying to gain a sense of self, a sense of pride in who I am as a so-called Black woman. And this is how the Black Power Movement began. Black people gaining a sense of self and self-pride, a sense of identity. But even after the Civil Rights Movement, your biggest scholars to date still don't know who they really are. Understand the magnitude of slavery here in America. Everything we know of our history was taught to us by the ones who founded this country as we know it today. When they called us black, we said, okay. But we come from somewhere. So then we tried to correct them. We put on a dashiki and we said, no, we're not black. We're African-American. And they said, sure you are. See, the Italians know where they immigrated from. The Spanish know where they come from. The Armenians know where they come from. The Filipinos, the Greeks, the French, the Russians, they all know where they come from. Certainly the Judaists who brought many of our ancestors here by boat know where they originate from. But do you? Do you know where you came from? We are the only involuntary immigrants here. We didn't come by choice. We came by force. And there are secrets behind that journey that we're still uncovering. Everyone has an extensive history except for us. And I'm laying the foundation for the subject of this video, which is Egyptology. This video is for those of you who are now leaning towards Egyptology and the gods and the belief systems of the ancient civilization of Egypt. I'm trying to show you the foundation behind your decision. I'm showing you how and why many so-called black people in America are searching for the root of themselves. See, many of us now, we're waking up, taking the blindfolds of slavery off and overcoming the methods of brainwashing we were subjected to. And we've been aching to know where we come from. And this is good. I'm there. We're all there. If you're watching this video, you're there. We're all in that same boat, trying to find our root. 
because not knowing where you come from is detrimental to most. Because see, when you adopt a child, the worst thing you can do is to not tell that child where they come from. Make that child think they come from you and they don't. Because what happens is that child grows up thinking they come from some place they didn't really come from. And they make life-changing decisions based on that lie. We're like adopted children here in America. There's a legal term called informed consent, meaning before I make a decision for my life, I have a right to know everything there is to know around that decision. They tell you you're African American, but are you? We were so hungry for identity coming out of civil rights, we accepted that title. And because we didn't know what nation we were, we identified with the place we were in, Africa and its origins in Egypt. But did it ever occur to you, did you ever stop to think, why were we slaves in Africa before we were brought to America? If Africa is indeed our motherland, as I've heard some of you call it, why were we enslaved there? If you research it, you'll find that those who were responsible for selling you were mainly Arab Muslims, followers of Islam, accompanied by some natives of the land who were black. And the white man tells you, well, you were enslaved by your own kind. But see, that's a lie. Why would the natives enslave millions of their own and sell them to the Europeans? They did it because we didn't belong to them. We were different from them. We were not natives of that land. We were not African. If we were, we'd still be there. Likewise, for you brothers out there who have turned to Islam, if your ancestors were Muslim, they wouldn't have been slaves in Africa, sold in Africa, and shipped to America. They would have been the slave handlers with the Arabs and the natives. We don't stem from Islam. We're in America today because we were of a different belief system, and we were of a different nation. We were not Africans, and we were not Muslims. Not to mention the fact that we were advertised to the Europeans as Israelites. They knew who you were when they bought you here. Most of them killed off that knowledge when they killed off the older slaves. But not all of them hid it. Thomas Jefferson knew who we were, and he didn't hide it. He goes on record having said his slaves were the chosen ones of the Most High. Richard Randolph knew it too. He gave his slaves 350 acres of land when they were free so they could build a town of their own. That town was in Virginia, established in 1810, and it was called Israel Hill. They called it that because they were Israelites. That truth was passed down through them. Their master didn't kill that knowledge off, but it takes more than a couple of leaders to tell the truth. But by killing off the older generation and leaving the youngest of us alive and ignorant, they killed off the knowledge we had of self. They killed off our history so they could brainwash us with a new identity, a false sense of self, and make us submit to a new God, a new law, new holidays, their politics, make us serve money like they have, and ultimately make money our new God. So for those of you who believe that Africa is your homeland and Kemet or Egypt is your homeland, you're like that adopted child who doesn't really know where he or she is from. You can't make a major life spiritual decision without knowledge of where you come from or who you are. For those of you who've trusted the title given to you, African American, has it ever occurred to you that maybe, maybe the founders of this country had no intentions of ever telling you who you really are, especially if they sought to oppress you physically, surely they would also oppress you mentally and spiritually. And now today they have themselves a country full of a nation they call blacks or African-Americans or even worse, minorities who actually believe that Africa was their homeland. So even to this day, again, our greatest challenge is knowing who we truly are as a nation descending from slavery. Why is this important? Because the key to going anywhere is first knowing where you come from. So now since some of you want to go back to Kemet or back to Egypt or Egyptology, I'm going to go back to Kemet for you and deal with the ancient knowledge of the Egyptians. There were several ancient civilizations. Ancient Egypt was not the only one, wasn't even the first one. 
the Mesopotamian civilization was the first. And within that civilization, first was the Sumerian civilization and later the Babylonian and Akkadian civilizations on that same land. This is where Abraham's people are from. This is the land of Ur that he came out of with his father, Terah. If you're an Israelite today, guess what? That's where you come from. And you may say, well, everyone comes out of Africa. Maybe, maybe not. That's what science says. But think about it. There were urban populations in Sumeria before Egypt's Nile Valley people arose as a civilization. There was already architecture and writing in ancient Sumeria by 3500 BC. These things didn't appear in Egypt for another 200 years or so. Sumeria had about 20 large cities at a time when Egypt had no known cities. But as people began to settle along the Nile Valley River, Egypt's civilization began. But the two ancient groups developed independently of one another. So what you have are two distinct civilizations rising up in two different places. The Nile Valley civilization in Egypt, or Kemet, and the Mesopotamian Sumerian civilization over in Sumer. And both groups developed their own belief system. And both groups served pagan gods. But the Mesopotamian Sumerian civilization is the root of everyone who claims to be Israelite. Not Egypt. You're not Egyptian. Just because you're dark-skinned doesn't mean you stem from the Nile Valley civilization in Kemet. I'm not saying one is better than the other. All I'm saying is, know which one you came from. And if you are Hebrew Israelite descendant, your ancestors did not come out of the Nile Valley civilization in Egypt. They came out of the Sumerian civilization. The Bible calls it Ur. Where is that? It's in present day Iraq. If you're an Israelite, that's where your people come from. If you're a descendant of black slavery here in America, nine chances out of 10, you're an Israelite. If you're an Israelite, your ancestors stem out of Sumeria. So if you're black in America today, your people stem from Sumeria, not Egypt, what they called the Middle East, Iraq. That's where you come from. When we think of the Middle East, as they call it today, we think of the Arabs. But if you've studied your history, you know that the Israelites and the Arabs are cousins, both groups descending from Abraham. And if you don't know by now, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I'm not an African, certainly not an African American, nor can I be classified as black. I'm a part of a nation that stems from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his 12 sons. Many of you are too. You just don't know it yet. So why am I stressing this? If you've chosen to follow after Egyptology, you can't make a major life decision about what you're going to believe and who you're going to serve or what you're going to revert back to without knowing where you truly come from. You want to go back to Kemet, but were you ever truly from there? No, you were not. You want to relate yourself back to Kemetic culture, but was that ever the culture of your people? No, it was not. But I can show you where in the Bible your Israelite ancestors were subjected to Kemetic culture as slaves. I can show you that. That's where your people were enslaved. For you Egyptians out there who want to spiritually go back to Kemet, revert back to Kemetic spirituality and worship Egyptian gods, you can go back. But for you Hebrew Israelites out there, you have to know where you're from and who you are to determine where you're going to go and what you're going to believe in. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 2 through 5 says, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the most high your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwelled, shall you not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, where I will bring you, shall you not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the most high your God. 